welcome Anthony Merlini to the stage. Um, I asked Anthony and Enrique to, to give an overview of, of what is an energy performance contract. And <clears throat> I don't want to steal their thunder, but I do want to open this, this presentation up by saying <clears throat> uh, we obviously the last couple of years have experienced some uh, tougher than usual budgets. We know as uh, uh, Entergy has left town, um, the pilot, uh, the significance of the pilot will, uh, will decrease uh, because they are no longer producing energy. Uh, time will tell what uh, future financial arrangement will look like with Holtec. Um, but there are oftentimes during budget seasons, budget season, there are a lot of questions around, you know, well, did you look at this or did you look at that or, or where could you reduce in other areas? And a couple of years ago, we dedicated significant uh, real estate in our budget newsletter, as we did again this year, uh, to trying to educate the community on all of uh, various areas where we have saved significant dollars that oftentimes no one sees, feels, or experiences, right? This includes um, using new and updated transportation uh, routing software uh, to be more efficient with our bus runs. Uh, this includes solar panels on our roofs so that we can buy power cheaper. Uh, it includes upgrading some of our equipment so that it runs more efficiently and more effectively driving down our cost of operation. Um, Anthony and Enrique are gonna talk a little bit about an opportunity that we may have later this, uh, this spring or into the summer um, to engage in a performance uh, energy performance contract uh, that will help us uh, self-fund some significant um, cost savings uh, initiatives that over time, over a five or 10 year, 15 period year of time will help us reduce our budget, reduce our operations budget, uh, which will reduce future tax increases or allow us to allocate those resources to different programs. So um, it's important that we, we don't just talk about all of the uh, the, the shiny initiatives that we have and, and celebrate all the great people uh, delivering them. But there's a lot of behind the scenes opportunities and areas where we have saved and where we can continue to. Uh, and we wanted to focus a little bit tonight on uh, another opportunity that's presented itself. So Anthony, Enrique, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Joe. Um, I just want to remind the board that about well, 12, 12, 13 years ago, yeah. we did our first energy performance contract. But then we spent about $2.6 million. Anton, is that correct? That's about right. Yeah. And with that money, we were able to uh, chain, uh, upgrade lighting, change one of the um anthony in the, the boilers the boilers the at boiler. blue mountain middle school and um, uh, thanks to that we were able we, we've been able to save about two to three hundred thousand dollars a year in energy consumption uh, with those savings we're paying for the bond that we issued to do the energy performance contract so the idea of an energy performance contract is to invest money and with the, uh, in energy and with the savings uh, pay for the bond. And that's what happened with that bond. We still have five years to go we, uh, from our old energy performance contract. And our boiler will, will last another 20 years and we already paid for all our investments, all with savings. So this is just an introduction of what the energy performance, performance contract is. So Anthony, go ahead. Sure. Um, so like Enrique said, and Joe, you, you know, we're always looking at new ways to save energy and curtail our utilities. And since I've been here, we've been doing that constantly, whether it's been through an EPC, the solar arrays that we put on top of our buildings, the way that we um, use our boilers when we're turning them on, when they're turning them off. Uh, we did an um, energy education thing a couple of years back, uh, changing our mindset of how we do things. So 
we have this opportunity to potentially do another energy performance contract. Lighting has come a long way. Um, there's new opportunities to curtail and save some more money there. So let's, let's go to the next slide and take it from there. So, like we said, this you know, energy performance contract is another way of funding building improvements with no cost back to the district. Self-funding um, program, uh, we can pay for different things, and lighting is usually a very good way to offset some of these other costs. So, lighting has a very fast payback. So, using that, we can do upgrades in other areas, whether it be through um, infiltration from weather whether it be for boilers, whether it be for HVAC equipment, a building management system, et cetera. It helps us pay for other things. And then we pay back that bond through its savings. And we also, every year we have a little bit of money left over that goes back as our, uh, just say our profit or it goes back into us beyond our savings. There's no, um, no bond vote is required. Um, we have the option to vote for an extra 10% aid. So um, if you want to put it out for a uh, vote, you get an extra 10% from the state. Uh, we have incentives that we can get through the NYSERDA and different other programs. Uh, we can even um, tap into those avenues and it qualifies the state. And, uh, the performance and savings are guaranteed through the ESCO. The ESCO is the company like a Siemens or a Honeywell or Johnson Controls. They're the ones that would come in and evaluate our buildings, see what the cost saving measures would be. Once they put these cost saving measures in place, they guarantee them that they're going to provide us with savings back. And if they don't provide us with savings back, they're on the hook for that back. Next slide. So this talks about a little bit about the conservation measures that we can <clears throat> that we can impose. So we have some lighting. We can upgrade to LED. Uh, we've done some of that uh, during our current bond. We've done some of this in the past. Um, our large our large spaces like our gymnasium. Some of them have been changed over to LED already. Uh, when we did the auditorium upgrades, those went to LED lighting. When we do our outside lighting, as we do some renovations, we, we change those elements. Building envelope is what I touched on a little bit before. So like uh, doors and seals and things like that and windows to try to uh, stop from weather uh, coming into our building. Building management system, which is like a BMS, where it controls our heating system uh, digitally. So we have a better control of that, better than the pneumatic system that we've had in the past. Mechanical system upgrades, um, changing out pumps uh, to be more efficient, uh, variable frequency drives, which are mechanisms that turn our motors on and off, but they'll ramp them up slowly and take them down slowly. So there's not a huge demand of electricity on the system. And by taking off that demand load, we, all, we change our cost structure with our providers like a NIFA or a Con Edison. Uh, that's Sorry, the system. Anthony. Yeah. Can uh, you hear me? Yes. The board might my might think why didn't they do why the, if if this is being paid on its own, why didn't do we do the lighting with an EPC and we paid for the lighting? So I want to explain to the board that it's not as simple as say, well, I want to change an LED I'm going to do an energy performance contract. An energy performance contract has to be approved by SED. And we have to show over 18 years, the reduction in costs. So for example, in, a, in our old energy performance contract, if we had done lighting on its own, we would have not passed the 18 year savings. When we added the boiler, then we were able to do it and to pass the 18 year rate of return. So this is not like, well, you know, we need 
in one hole LEDs and it's going to cost us $50,000, let's do an EPC. It doesn't work like that. So uh, I just wanted to let the board know that, you know, because probably you were thinking, well, why did we spend the money in the auditorium if we could, we could have done it in an energy performance contract? That, that lighting would have not given the rate of return over the 18 years that we have to get with a full EPC. Correct. Sorry, Anthony, now you can continue. No, no, absolutely, chime in. Um, electrical system upgrades, I touched on a little bit of those with having motors that were more efficient, you know, newer style, um, where they ramp up uh, easily and they go back down easily. So we're not putting that large demand. Some of the other renewable things, you know, you talk about solar, wind, geothermal, some of these things we may be able to participate on, some that are not. These are just typical things that um, ESCO will look at when they're trying to evaluate the school. Yeah. Hey, so hey, yeah, it, sure. it just asks a question. I mean, it, I don't think geothermal is an option unless you have um, ventilation into every room in the building, right? Is that because I think in geothermal you have to have a separate air handler, and you actually have to have venting to every single room. And I think we have a lot of baseboard in a lot of our schools. Is that? Yeah, room? that's like like I said. You know, Probably some of these measures, the you know the ESCOs. These are just typical examples of what some other districts have been able to. Um, partake in, and again, they, they work for some, they won't work for all. They just kind yeah. of like, you know, just showing you a broad base of that. Because it would be great to get air conditioning to all the, the student classrooms. Yeah. We, one, of, I, one of the things I've asked them to look at, at uh, you know, I know we've did a lot of ventilation this year, which has helped improve um, the, I, I think it has helped improve with the, with the stifleness of in the Inside the buildings with the heat buildup, um, if you walk through um, some of your buildings, you're actually starting to feel the air move through the building, which I think is positive. Um, but, you know, uh, one of my buildings that's always, you know, when you have multiple levels, like something like the middle school or something like the high school, there are um, pockets of those two buildings that, you know, I'm having them evaluate and look, look into to see if we can do something. Yeah, that would be, I mean, just from... Not just comfort, but from a safety standpoint, right? yes, having that absolutely. air circulate, yep. it's great. Thanks. Next slide. So this is a little hard to read and a little hard to read for me. Um, it kind of goes through um, things, the, the steps or the process, you know, almost like, you know, a shoots and ladder table or something like that. And coming through and you're seeing what the, pro what the different steps of the program would entail. Um, right now, uh, we actually had someone do kind of like a preliminary assessment to say, hey, look, you know, you think, you think it's viable that you do uh, another um, energy performance contract. So we had somebody evaluated for that. Um, right now, we're out to um, soliciting uh, requests for uh, proposals from several entities to come back um, to see what they think are would be energy sav saving measures from uh, within our district. Um, and then once they come back, um, we'll have an interview with those ESCOs to evaluate them, um, to see what they're proposing, to see if it's worthwhile. And then we'll start to go into the rest of it, you know, the process development, the procurement, you know, your letter of intent, SED, and all these different steps to get to final submission and approval from SED, or talking about the financing of it and the construction and commission. So, so Anthony, is partner. this slide the answer to the question, how many New York State board, uh, New York State educators does it take to change a light bulb? Is yeah. that this? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of. And you can see it's, it's not an easy process. It's a little, you know, it's a lengthy process. It's no, long, it's no different than doing any other bond um, project that we've done. Um, if you remember, we started out with the bond in 2018 that we're just finishing now. Um, so it's kind of like that same long road of getting someone on board, getting a project designed, going through the approval process and getting it. Through. I mean, this is, this is the answer. Like when people say, why does it take so long to get things done in the district? Well, this is the perfect slide to show <laughs> exactly. you that. 
right? This is absolutely ridiculous. Yep. Right. Yep. To go get an energy audit and find out, well, how do we go save money and change some light bulbs and install some seals and windows? Right. And this is what we have to go through. And it takes at least eight weeks to get yep. through this process. You would think That's it'd be easier. Nuts. Yeah, so yeah. I'm trying to see, like, adding up all these different numbers. So the entire process takes, like, a couple of years even to get through it? Or, I mean, before you're at the point where they're installing stuff? Well, or, you know, you, you have a couple weeks. of things that go on with that. So, you know, uh -huh. even for us, construction periods are very limited. You know, you're really looking at the window of, you know, the summer to do your construction or to do your nitty and gritty construction. You know, there's things that we can do on the nights, weekends, holidays, breaks, and things like that. But when we're talking about doing large things, we really want to try to time them up for the summer. So sometimes even when we do get approval and it comes in September or October, you know, we're, we sit on our hands a little bit and we bid it out and then we do the paperwork and we don't start, you know, breaking ground until June. So this gives you an idea of, you know, weeks and the time span it takes. Um, I envision if we, you know, we get everything up and running now, um, it, it's probably a year, a year and a half, depending on, you know, what transpires. But if all goes well, maybe we can, you know, summer. Lisa, so, so you get an idea about this last time that we did it. It was going to take two years because SED did not have uh, people to calculate the rate of return. So we had to pay about 15 to $20,000 to a company that they decided because they wouldn't trust us to, so we had to call them and say, which company do you want? They gave us two companies we had to send all the project to those two companies, pay them the $20,000, and then they send it to SED, and then SED approved it. So, so we, it, we basically paid to expedite it. But it also, it would have been another year, Anthony. Correct. Wow. Back then, they were looking at long lead time and back then they had four people, today they have one. So you can imagine. But yeah, Any other that's that's what it is. So we're looking we are looking at a good year and a half to two years probably out before Yeah, we I mean all said and done. I mean you have the construction and commissioning in there, which is ten to twelve months. So they're putting in time in there and then the you know second half of the eighteen years. So yeah, it depends. Next slide. Just, uh, just recap some of the benefits, uh, relieve capital costs, uh, improvements in mechanical electrical systems, can improve our lighting and control, upgrades the buildings, qualifies for aid and incentives, uh, turnkey, soup the nuts, start to finish, uh, no change orders because it's all based on their findings and what they're doing, so they guarantee what they're doing. Uh, long-term commitment to performance and guarantee performance and savings by the ESCO company that we select to come in and, and do this project. Next slide. That's it. Any other questions or? Thank you. Thanks for letting us uh, show that to you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Enrique.